Um, so yeah, hi, my name is uh, Adam Bretz. Um, that's ARB on GitHub and ARB um, on IRC and the Happy Channel and uh, Adam Bretz on the Twitter. Um, so I work at Walmart on the open source team. Um, believe it or not, that is a real thing. And um, so I pretty much spend my day working on um, the happy, basically, universe and uh, everything that sort of goes along with it. Um, if you follow any of the, the activity stream for that, you'll notice I do a lot of work on the good um, ops monitoring plugin and sort of the, the pieces that uh, make that up. So as you can probably guess, I'm here to talk to you about Lab. Um, so Lab is the testing framework that we use um, at Walmart. Uh, we use it both internally and uh, externally for uh, the entire Happy JS stack. Uh, before I get too far into this, um, all of the examples um, are for Lab version 5. So if you're using an older version, um, you're, you're encouraged to move to 5. Um, there's uh, readme, thanks. There's readmes and uh, sort of help as to how to do that. It's, uh, it's pretty easy though. So today I'm going to talk basically about uh, three things. Uh, why use lab at all, um, talk about a new assertion module named code, and then I'm going to give you a pep talk. So why use lab? Um, three things, three main points really. Um, it's been battle tested, um, it's easy to use, like hopefully you find the other happy modules to use, and um, it's got useful options and features that are, you know, enterprise grade. So um, all, of the, uh, all of the 30 or more, it keeps changing, uh, open source repos under the happy JS umbrella all use lab. Um, in addition to that, every project inside Walmart um, uses lab as well. So you know, lab's been built to test high demand, uh, high uptime systems like happy and the servers that run inside uh, that, that power the, the, the Walmart sites. So, you know, it, it's really been, been uh, run through the ringer. So, um, these are just two examples to make sure that one plus one uh, does equal two. And um, if you look at them, one is TDD, one's BDD. I don't know which one, I don't really understand the difference, but one's one and one is the other. Um, so it's unopinionated un un how you build and lay out your tests. If you can see, you kind of sort of can. Uh, it's basically just aliases you flip around to make it TDD or BDD. And um, so change it to, to suit, suit your needs. All right, so some of those features I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm going to talk about some of the, the really handy ones. Um, these are all like CLI options, the, the dash C and T. So that's, this is all CLI stuff, the next few slides. Um, so dash C and dash T for coverage and threshold. So right out of the box, lab gives you code coverage. Basically, is there, co is there lines of code being hit in the test context that you have defined? Yes or no? Um, the dash T sets up the threshold for a failed versus passed test. So if your code coverage is less than X, then you get, you know, a, a frowny face. Your tests do not pass. Um, once you start using it, you will find that the code coverage is annoyingly thorough. Um, so in this example I've got here, you will need code that exercises both sides of that OR statement for settings, both sides of the ternary operator for results, and all three sides of that if statement. Um, it's annoying, but uh, it's the only way to know for sure that you've hit everything. So there's built-in linting uh, right out of the box. Um, it comes, lab comes default with a, um, as a lint file that sort of matches the happy uh, style guide. It uses ESLint as the rule engine. Um, if you don't like our style guide, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, um, you can override it with your own ESLint RC file at the root of your project. And uh, one thing I want to note there, if you do that, you need to supply your own entire file. It doesn't like merge or anything wacky like that. So if you want to use your own, you've got to write your, your own. And this example here is basically what, what it looks like if uh, lint is mad. So this is new um, in 5, the dash A option. You basically tell lab 
the name of the assertion library you're using, and that um, is helpful because then it can keep track of how many assertions you've run. Um, it doesn't sound very useful, but sometimes you think you've run an assertion, but you actually don't, and you can sometimes get like a mysterious test that passes, but you don't end up actually testing anything. So uh, the dash A is a very powerful uh, new feature to the lab. So we got verbose and ID. Verbose prints out all that test verbiage you spent time writing for your TDDs and BDDs. Um, it prints out, you know, math module sum, sums numbers. It does not crash on empty arrays. It prints out how long it took to run the test. Um, a little glyph for pass fails. And it also prints out a test ID. And that test ID is useful for the ID flag. So that lets you basically run specific subsets of tests. Um, if you're trying to get coverage or make a particular feature work, you can run an ID and just keep hitting the one or two tests over and over again instead of rerunning the entire suite. And that'll take a range uh, one through two, one and two. It'll also take a little mix and match so you can do one, comma, two, three through four. Um, let's see. So there's a few other quick features that I want to mention that don't need a whole slide. Um, async testing is easy because every test is passed a callback. Um, I know some other testing frameworks, it's, you do something a little different to get async testing. Um, in lab, everything's already assumed to be async. You have a bunch of different output options, not just consoles. So if you have a very involved uh, project manager who wants to see graphs and charts, uh, you can print it out to HTML or uh, coveralls. Um, there's a bunch of different reporting options as well. So how we use lab, and again, when I say we, I really mean Walmart internally and externally, and uh, again, it's the same uh, pretty much in both cases. So that dash T option I talked about threshold uh, is 100. So the threshold for code coverage always has to be 100. Um, if you've ever made any PRs into the happy universe, and I hope you have and encourage you to do so, you will probably get comments about, hey, this is missing coverage, or tests don't pass, hey, you need to add tests. It's the dash T100 that, uh, that's doing that to you. So um, that, that's where that comes from. Um, always use a CI server that runs a designated test command. And um, we, have, we use a makefile, but the makefile really just has different lab configs. Um, but NPM test is usually fine for most people. And um, nothing ever, no PR ever gets merged in unless the CI server says that everything passed. So you have to meet that coverage thres threshold. You have to pass linting rules if you use it. Um, unless you're Aaron, then you can merge anything. So what do you get from all this? You get um, this sort of neat automatic feedback loop that doesn't require humans. So you open a pull request against something. Your CI server will run and you'll see that little glyph on GitHub uh, warning you that it can't be merged in. And so then hopefully you look at the details and see, hey, coverage is less than 100%, or your linting failed, or, or you know, you're missing a test entirely. And so the, um, you know, the cool thing there is that you have this feedback loop that's pretty much automatic, and you kind of pull people through writing better code without having to harass them to do it. So it's a pretty, pretty nice little cycle. And um, it's definitely worth setting up just for that alone. You get higher quality code, and you sort of get that for free by having this sort of um, continuous feedback loop. So quickly, I'm going to touch on the, this uh, code module I talked about. Um, so that's a new one. Um, and yeah, it's just a, base, a pretty simple assertion library. Um, Lab formerly came bundled with Chai. Um, but, uh, but we broke that out because Chai was kind of a little more than what we really needed at a lab. And it was also sort of this problem here where you couldn't remember if it was a property or a method. So in code, every like assertion is always a method. Um, and this also goes back to that assert um, command I mentioned earlier where this um, expect property versus expect um, method if you didn't, if it was a method, but it wasn't supposed to be, you could inadvertently get a um, a true test when you actually didn't assert anything because dot exist might not actually be a property. Um, so yeah, code's cool. 
Um, it's consistent, everything's always a method, and there's a lot fewer uh, human words to sort of memorize, so it's easy to, to commit to memory. Okay, so how can you get started? Hopefully um, you have tests already, but if you don't, this is supposed to make you go and do that now if you don't. Um, so number one, do something. Um, yeah, you're not getting 100% coverage and tests that say it work uh, is going to take some time. So just start small. Um, write the tests that the it works type of tests. And, um, you know, just the, the simple sort of integration tests like that, you'll probably hit 50, 60, even 70% code coverage right out of the gate. Um, once you get there, you know, change your process. If you don't, if testing is not part of your process now, make it part of your process. New feature, you, you don't, nothing ever happens unless you have a test to prove the feature works. If you fix a bug, either create or add a test to make sure the, 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 uh, the test is good and doesn't cause any regressions. Once you change your process and get that part of it, code coverage will go up and, um, and you'll be happy. And um, once you put that time in to get, you know, testing built into your process, get coverage up, the rest is easy. It's just maintenance from there. And um, yeah, so 87.5%, they probably thought this truck was okay, but it doesn't really look like it still works. So 100% should probably be your goal or close to it, and um, that's probably not good enough, 87.5. Okay, that's the end. Um, if you want this deck, I'll send it out. There's some links to uh, the deck, to the lab repo, and to the code repo as well. Thanks.